she is. 2004 Sea-Doo XPDI. Brand new seat. No scratches. Mint condition. Easily brings 6,000. Hmm. Oh, and it doesn't run. So, I'm just gonna wipe this off with uh, some water. Just do a little winter cleanup quickly, just to get some of the salt off, and then we'll wheel her inside and have a look. clean. Okay, a ah, little bit of wipe down. It makes such a huge difference. So, item number one, I guess we're gonna remove all the aftermarket stickers, which actually only seems to be that one, but I seem to think there was another one. Uh, there is on the back. Item number two, oops, is I gotta see if I've got a cover for this. Now I did put it on one on a GSX, uh, but I think I have some of this rail, so maybe we can make something here. So we gotta fix that. Needs a buff job for sure. I don't know what's going on with this or what this was, but that's all toast. So we'll pull those gauges out and maybe just pull that stuff off and clean it up. I guess it was just sort of an accent thing. Uh, seats toast. What else do we see? I guess that's it for there. Now, uh, I haven't hooked a battery up or done anything yet. Uh, which we're gonna do. He said that they there was uh, mice had made a nest in here And when I was looking in here, you can see the mouse nest Or what's left of it But if you look right here Coming to the end of the flashlight you can see heat shrink on the wire And I noticed that color coding is different. Now, I don't know whether they've replaced something because see it goes from a blue and the other end is purple. So I just want to verify that that is proper. And that's about all I can see in there for right now. And under the hood, oh, got to set you down here. gonna stay probably not bunch of garbage in there let's just start moving some of this stuff out of the way what I get in here tether rope nothing exciting doesn't look too bad in here I guess I Loose cover, no big deal. Water in there. Better get that out. Oil's very low. Fuses everything here. So, I mean, it's the same DI engine. It's just everything sort of moved around. So we just got to find our way around. And the engine's up in the front instead of in the middle. But uh, I like this for access. And then, 
back cover. Yeah, your typical crud bilge pump. Don't think that was stock because it's in there, not connected. Not seeing anywhere where that water would come out, but maybe there's something down there. I, I don't know. I've never had one of these guys before. Although I am seeing something there with a clamp not connected. So maybe that's factory. I don't know. We're going to check it all out and see. So we'll have to hook the battery up and see what goes on. But I heard it gets like four fast beeps and, uh, and then that's it. It doesn't power up. So. I think that's our next step is to hook up the battery, see what it does, and then we'll move forward with whatever diagnosis and repair. And ultimately, take and refer cruise. So, uh, yeah, let's get at it. Got one more thing to add to the list of repairs. I just pulled the one off on the other side and it was wobbly like that so I pulled it apart, changed the wheel bearings. They had inch and 116 bearings and this old trailer actually uses the one inch bearings. So uh, don't make that mistake. You can just grab a caliper. That's uh, what sixteenth of an inch difference but that's what you get. So change those first and then we'll go over the sea -Doo. Okay, so let's do our test here on this thing to see what it doesn't do. Okay. That's hooked up. Now I just want to see if anything activates when I push the button. Any gauges? No gauges. Tether. Wonder. That's the. Beeper. That tells you that the tether's left in the three beeps. Hmm. Okay. So I think before I mess with this, these are the wires that were heat shrunk and I see he's got tape all the way up. So we need to see what he did up inside there. But I think, uh, before that, we're going to do a fuse check. So let's do that. Get a good ground here. Look at the voltage, 8.6. So why is that? Six point eight volts. No, oh, sorry, eight. Just bad connections in there. All right, let me test the bolts on the battery. Something, something's weird. Twelve point three. 
Okay, right from the battery. There's that side from the battery. 12.6 goes there. So how do we end up with 8.6 there? So I'm thinking possibly something to do with the tether itself, which are that the initial wires that were pulled off and on. Maybe I can hook another tether up right directly into here. Maybe. Yeah, she's beeping, making all kinds of noises. I think we need to get up and in here and see what this guy did. pop another, a different tether on. It's not the right one, but just to eliminate the tether itself. Uh, see? And the gauges light up. Possible wrong tether. I'm gonna hook up the CanDo Pro. And CanDo Pro is hooked up, plugged in. I put my tether from another machine on here just to wake up the computer. There's something definitely wrong with that uh, tether. these weird weird numbers I'm getting there looking for vehicle all right let me just do some more research so from trying a whole bunch of uh, different things uh, it won't let me program with the can do pro um, you put the program tether on and you got to wiggle the thing around like crazy to get it to make any sort of contact. When it finally uh, works, it's like a quick beep and shuts off. If I put an improper tether on, uh, one that's not programmed, uh, again, you got to wiggle the hell out of it, but then finally it makes contact. Uh, but then the computer only stays awake for, you know, the five seconds, just like when you double push the uh, start button and shuts off, so it won't let me reprogram another key. So either we've got a computer problem, which I, I don't really think I do because it, I can read it. Um, so, but I can't say for sure. But this tether thing, they've, the dealers replaced that. Uh, somebody's done something with it and this machine beeps like the key is in all the time when the key's not on. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is just change that tether. We'll just do a, we'll cut and just twist the wires on as a temporary test uh, to see if that's what the issue is. I mean, worst case, I put this one back on and reheat shrink it, it's no big deal, but at least that'll uh, let me know what's going on. It's, it's kind of hard to figure out what somebody else has done but uh, I am suspicious of this tether, so, because when I unplug it, uh, the beeping stops. So there's something, something strange going on here. So let me, uh, I'm gonna just clip the wires. Should probably clip them down here, and that way if there's a bad connection in the wire, no, I'll clip them up here and then we'll check the connection on the wires just to make sure that there is continuity there. And uh, go from there. Battery is disconnected. 
clipper somewhere around here. So that way if the post is still good. All right. First thing I want to do is compare the readings on this one to the new one. So, let's first off see if any of these are shorted. Mm -hmm. Too many leads here. <laughs> Okay. White shorter to yellow, no. Blue, black, no. Yellow, uh-huh. So yellow and black are shorted. Now if we go to this new tether, this is the yellow. black. So I, I, that's it. I'm pretty sure there's something wrong with that uh, post. So we're going to roughly connect this one up. Black yellow to black yellow. Gray to white. Purple to the blue. And solid black to solid black. triple beep. Hmm. No change. Forms exactly the same. Well, now we're in deep. All right. What's next? Okay, so not the tether. Then I started thinking we had eight volts at the computer right at the very beginning when we first checked this out. And it was kind of suspicious of that. But then I thought, uh, maybe more volts go in when you hook up the tether. Anyway, I hooked uh, the power back up on the uh, GTX. And uh, sure enough, full 12 volts at the computer. So then I started looking around. I see that the, you know, we were, saw the bilge pump just sort of laying in here. So then I thought, okay. I will disconnect the power to the bilge pump in case it's shorted. So, first of all, let me uh, show you. We'll check the bolts at the computer right now. Eight and a half volts. Now, come back here. This is the power for the 
to input the power for the uh, bilge pump. Come back. Hook this up again if I can hold it. Can you see the meter? And we get one volt. Something's going on with power coming into the computer. So I think we're gonna go back to the e-box where I started tearing stuff apart. Something's going on here, whether well, it's something in this module here, but for some reason, we're only getting eight volts come out of there. That bilge pump is powering the computer right now, and I suspect that that's where all the trouble is coming from. So uh, we're gonna tear that apart. Why not? <laughs> we'll figure it out. Okay. Get the coil packs out of the way. Come off of there. Okay. Coil pack. Delete. Uh, let's see what we got here. We got some grounds over there. Okay, what do I see? All right, let's do some voltage checks. volts so and then we determined with this guy unplugged is only getting eight volts just checking here No volts to the computer. Okay, so no volts. That means we're not getting any power out of this thing. Let's check this. See if there's any volts on this. Probably going in, just not coming out. 12 volts on the fuse. That's the 12 volts from there. We gotta see what's coming out of this thing. And I don't know, I don't see an easy way to, maybe I can unbolt that from the cover. All right, how can I get this? All right, I had a spare connector. So I'm just gonna, I just plug that in down there. Just hook onto here, see what we got. Nothing coming out of that. Zero. But that would, you know, if this module is toasted. Then we wouldn't be getting any power to the computer. We're just, it's just back feeding through the uh, bilge pump right now, powering the computer. Outside of that, we're getting nothing. And I dropped the fuse down in the bilge. <laughs> Well, uh, and it doesn't easily unplug. So I think we're gonna be doing a little snip in there and plug in the other module that I have here. Give it a try. Might have screwed up there on the testing because the fuse wasn't in. 
Who was screaming about that? Still no volts. No volts, no volts, no volts. 12 volts. The other thing I'm wondering is, is, is this guy here, purple black, in any way related to the tether and does the tether somehow complete a circuit and energize that and then that lets the voltage flow through. I'm not sure. Why don't I uh, do a temp hookup of the tether as well and then uh, go from there. Okay, tether. Not doing anything right now. No volts. Twelve. Nothing there. Nothing there. Let's put some power. See if that results anything different. My jewel bad? I don't know. All right, pulled the box up, not cutting wires. Pull that little. And those little clips right there, just push it over and pull the wire out. So we gotta pull the bottom left out. Which is that one. Aha! Extracted. All right. Look at everything's quite the mess now. Anyway, I'm gonna pop this other one in the reverse way and see what happens. That is a tight fit. Thirty amp fuse. All right. So now hook the power back on the battery again. Alrighty. So that's in. Check the power. Still eight and a half volts. You can when I put the um, tether on. You can just hear every once in a while just a little bit of noise whether it's the fuel pump uh, trying to pump, um, but just not quite enough power there. So I gotta figure out, we gotta trace the power and figure out why it's eight and not 12. There's something somewhere, fuse blown somewhere, something, uh, and we've just gotta trace it all out. So I guess I'm gonna be going through the manual and have a look at the wiring schematic and see if I can figure out something. Because I've tried all the little obvious things here. You know, that little swap out wasn't any big deal and um, the tether, cutting the tether was kind of a bummer, but uh, anyway, it is what it is. So let me get a little more uh, research going now. This one's gonna be a little bit more challenging, but I'm sure we're gonna find a fuse buried somewhere that I don't know about. You know, they have one like hidden under this cap and there's another one down in the box down there. And so there's gonna be something somewhere that's just, you know, the one we need. I just gotta find it. And there's fuses here. So my guess is there's probably something back here as well, but do some reading. All right, well, I've gone through and I have checked everything. And the only thing that I could uh, determine was this module is bad as well, which was out of an old ski. 
because it's not letting any power through. And if I bypass this and run the power uh, directly into the computer, let's say, or I, instead of cutting wires here, I just put a wire into the fuse box, ran it through my amp meter just to see how many amps it was drawing. And I put this on here to give us some juice into the computer and plug in the tether and the machine is alive. So I guess I got to order another one of those, but at least now it will uh, energize. So I'm going to put everything else back together and uh, then we'll see if she runs and then we'll deal with that shortly. A little bench test. Pulled the uh, cutoff relay out again. So I'm suspicious of this one as well. Now the other one was shorted and I uh, hit it with the power from the battery charger about 20 times and all of a sudden the relay started working. So I'm going to test that other one now uh, in the machine. But I want to see if this relay actually works. Which it does. And let's see if there's any power on this terminal now. No power going through it. passing any current. Power is here, yes. Uh, now it's passing. All right, reinstall, see what happens. Is this or the tether? One or the other. We just gotta figure it out. So the purple and black wire that comes out of here goes up to the tether. It says purple and black wire here. And when you put the tether on, that's supposed to send that to ground. That turns on the relay and sends the power we need to the uh, MPEM. And if I manually jump to ground. Uh, let me see if I got a wire here somewhere. Here's one. If I jump that purple wire to ground, you can hear the relay clicking. Oh yeah, hold. Hopefully you can hear it. That relay is working perfectly. If I leave this set up, plug the tether in. Uh, ah, can't hold all those things, but anyway, plug the tether in with that uh, relay activated, this thing fires up just fine. So, uh, actually I don't know if it fires, but it recognizes the um, tether. So we're gonna put all that back together. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. This is a back to a, a tether issue. I don't know whether this is the wrong model, I don't know, it's weird because both of them are acting the same or there's some kind of wire connection problem between here and here. I haven't figured that out yet, but obviously uh, they changed the tether, that didn't solve the problem. So there's something mysterious going on that we've got to figure out. So uh, the fun continues. This is electrical issues. Uh, they are difficult to figure out but uh, we're definitely closing in on it now. We know it's everything else works just fine. So whatever it is with this tether circuit, we've got to figure that out. So let's get after it. Rigged up a ground, tied this lead into the um, tether wire where I twisted them up top, purple, black, connect here, click, click. Now it's activated. There she is. 
we're closing in on it. But gotta figure out the tether. My guess is there's something up with the color coding on the wires, whether the purple, black, yellow, I don't know, something, something's not right. All right, so the new plan of attack now is to put the E-box all back together, fuse covers on, uh, make sure that everything is buttoned up here, and then in the back I remove the uh, trim cover just to check that out, so we're gonna put that back on get that all buttoned up, and then we're gonna mess with my tether rig. I suspect there might be something blown in that computer uh, is why this is not was not activating. This, this uh, relay froze shorted, and it was a dead short, so I'm guessing something got screwed up, whether it was when they replaced the tether and shorted something out, I don't know, but uh, I can definitely, uh, make a little bit of a rig here that will work just fine. So let me get this all put back together. It's just the reverse of what we did when we took it apart. And uh, then we'll get into the wiring of the tether. Fishing of the wires for the tether. I'm not going to tie in up here. I'm going to put them right into the connector. That should be enough. Perfect. And we'll cut that there. Ah, it's good. Okay, so I think now I'll put this cover back on, put the new tether in, post, desk post, then we'll move on to the next phase. So let me put that on. We have throttle. Okay. Next. Moving up into here. Which means reconnecting these to these. So let's get that all apart. All right, white wire. The sh wire is too short, so I gotta shrink over the existing shrink. Okay. So, now comes the yellow purple situation we have. So, I have a rig that I'm gonna do. I'm going to jump across the yellow and the blue with a two amp fuse. And that should <clears throat> allow everything to function as it did originally. Uh, hopefully at some point I can figure out what the cause of this was that, or not the cause, but what we've got to do to fix it properly. And that may mean changing the computer and I don't think I'm willing to do that. It doesn't make sense. They're going for 350 US was the cheapest one I could find, which is a bit of a rip. So I'm gonna bail on that for now. So yellow to yellow, 
Let me get some more shrink. Yellow to yellow, and then this has to go in there as well. Next one. All right. Got in there. The wires get pulled way in. <clears throat> All right. I'll zip that up here in a second. Now we'll hook up the battery. Check for spark. Any sparks? No sparks. This whole rig is also that it was to help with these parasitic draws on these machines. I guess keeping power going to the computer uh, would drain the battery over time. And so now when, I, when the tether's disconnected, that yellow and blue are not connected. No, that's not true. They are connected all the time. Well, we'll have to see what happens. Anyway, uh, where did I put the tether? Let's see what happens. And just like that, away she goes. So I want to pull those spark plugs. We'll do a quick compression check, make sure everything's okay. Then we'll fire it up. All right, we're gonna do this in drown mode because I got nowhere to put the Spark plug wires. This has all the engine storage spray in it and everything, so it's been properly winterized. Drown mowing again. Oh yeah. Antifreeze dripping out the back. All right, you know what comes next. Let's put the plugs back in. Try firing it up. I gotta get some new plugs. These are the ZFR4F. I have 6F, I think, is for the RX, the other ones. So, I don't know, unless I have the wrong plugs. All of this just to get it to crank over. We don't even know if this thing runs yet. All right. Let's 
let's give her a try, see what happens. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I don't want to rev it up too much because it's just going to blow antifreeze all over the place, but she's looking good. All right. That's successful. I love that. I think we're good to go. So uh, next thing is now just do a good cleanup, polish up the hull and everything, and then uh, I guess wait till spring. What else can we say? Well, I'm gonna go through and check all the other systems and everything, so I think for now, we'll call this a video. Then maybe we'll do something on the seat. Oh yeah, and I got the nose cone coming, so uh, maybe we'll see if we get the nose cone. That's where we'll uh, call it a video, but uh, anyway, for now, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.